bless morning friends and folks I didn't do this yesterday because my phone didn't charge but it's fully charged today but even more so than that phone is us being charged and refreshed by the spirit of the Lord when we wake up with street corner such as the eagles every day it's a blessing within itself there's a lot of people not even getting out of bed this morning and there's a lot of people <laughs> that have already crossed over into the afterlife Today, September 7th, 2023, this is living in an out of control world. We have a quote from John Milton. There has never been and cannot be a good life without self-control. Pretty much common sense here, right? And we have a scripture, Acts 24 and 25. As Paul discovered on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may leave. Inward. Paul went all over the Roman Empire preaching the grace of God and the salvation that comes only through faith in Jesus. He was quite emphatic about God's mercy, both in his arguments and his letters. We are saved by grace alone, so why? When defending himself to Felix, did he speak of righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come? Why didn't he speak of grace? Remember, gain grace is unmerited favor, something that you and I don't deserve. Perhaps Paul meant to portray himself as a lawful citizen, not a troublemaker who would stir up Felix's territory. Perhaps he was trying to tap into whatever moral sentiment had attracted Felix to his Jewish wife. But a likelier reason, one particularly relevant to our times, is that Felix was a Roman, largely unacquainted with the law, and satisfied with the options of the Roman pantheon. The empire's, re the empire's religion had numerous patron gods to pick and choose from, most with their own easy morality. In such a context, grace means nothing. Conviction must come first. Righteousness, self-control, and judgment must be taught. Indeed, the conclusion. What does grace mean in our society? In the minds of those who are convicted or, or in the minds of those who are convinced of their sinfulness, it is a refreshing oasis of relief from a dry spiritual desert. But for those who have embraced a fuzzy relative morality, the whatever you like ethics of our age, grace means nothing. Why would a generation that has defined its own easy standards need a merciful God? What is there to forgive? Hmm, that sounds like a, what you call a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is one without a conscience, one that does what it does and don't feel no kind of conscience about it. That's why we must live in a way that conveys God's purity, not holier than our judgment, but a radical, sacred change of lifestyle. Instead of fearing that our friends will respond as Felix did, we should rather fear a generation that has lost any contempt concept of sin. Self-control is a foreign idea in our society. Exemplify it. Your life will stand apart, and your world just might see its need for God. Hmm, self-control. I know when you're angry, you're out of control, right? And anger gives a foothold to the devil. So things get out of control you're giving you're giving a foothold to the devil now <laughs> that goes for me y'all anger is one of my weaknesses as well as a lot of other people we all deal with it differently and me i'd rather pray and go lift some weights you know that's where the hearts before iron ministry comes in i'd rather pick up that cross and go pray for the people and then you know that gets lifted when i give i was like all right lord i don't feel i feel pretty mad about this so i'll give this to you lord Take this anger from me, so that way I'm simmering down and your peace that surpasses all understanding. That's being in control, not that I'm in control of myself, but the spirit, when I give my things to him, that are trying to drive my flesh out of control, the spirit puts me in control. And then with that, I can roll. I can roll on to the next situation, knowing I have the full armor of God, the full blessing of God, and I have his love that suffers long and endures everything. I face really hard things since I was 10. Hard to lose your mom when you're 10 so forth and so on, favorite aunts, uncles, but all that, you know, if I was going to go out of control, it would have been when I buried my wife, December 23rd, she crossed the stars, 2021, we buried her the 30th, and New Year's was flipping, you know, everyone gets drunk on New Year's, thinks they're having a good time, what kind of a time is a good time when you go get ripped and you feel like hell the next morning, looking stupid on January 1st of the new year, it's just, that used to be me, but it ain't no more, I stayed in control because I give God all the praise, glory, and honor, and I thank Him for taking her home. 
no more suffering. And I'll see her again someday. That's an example of staying in control by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to leave right there. Be blessed in your iron journey and be in control.